Sorry, I asked for blueberries, not strawberries. And just a little whipped cream, please. Sure thing. Hey, what are you two up to? Professor Malcolm asked for my help running an experiment on anger. Jake is our test subject. I've taken him the wrong order three times now. But no matter what I do, he doesn't get angry. Yeah, it does take a lot for him to get worked up. Maybe this will do the trick. Just a little less whipped cream, please. Ugh. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. I'm Jake, and this is the time I learned how to deal with anger. Did you tell Professor Malcolm I'm sorry for messing up his experiment? Actually, he said the experiment was on me the entire time. Whew, that's good to hear. What? Don't you ever get angry? I guess not. I think I'm just a happy person. But everyone gets angry sometimes. Not me. Would you stop staring at me? Is it making you angry? No, it's just freaking me out a little. Hey, we got a postcard. Let's see. Dear Connect HQ, last week my friend came over to play video games. When he lost a game, he threw one of my controllers and broke it. Now I'm really mad at my friend. But is that okay? Is it a sin to be angry? From Finn. I'd be mad at that kid, too. You're not gonna tell Finn that, are you? Why not? It's okay for us to be angry, as long as our anger doesn't stop us from doing what God wants us to do. I learned a couple years ago that if I'm angry and I want to fight, God can help me do what's right. If I'm angry and I want to fight, God can help me do what's right? I'm not sure whether or not I believe that. Anger just seems so bad. We might need someone else's help to sort this out. Quick question, would you tell Jake that anger is not a sin? Or if it is a sin, would you tell Dot that instead? <laughs> well, believe it or not, Jake, anger is not a sin. Really? Huh. Hey, uh, maybe you and I should have a conversation about bragging later. Fair enough. Jake, will you say a verse with me? Sure. It's from the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse 26. It goes like this. Ephesians 4, 26. Ephesians 4.26. When you are angry, do not sin. When you are angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Anger is a tricky thing. It can lead us to do the right thing, but it can also lead us to do the wrong thing if we're not careful. Right. That's why it's important to deal with our anger when we feel it. Ignoring it or acting out in anger by hurting others or getting revenge isn't good for us. I get what you're saying, but I just don't know if I could ever be comfortable being angry. Hmm. You know what? I have an idea. Follow me. Ah, oh, hello. <laughs> Thanks again for this waffle, Dot. It really is delicious. <laughs> well, there are a lot more where that came from. <laughs> what can I help you with? Well, we know that you've been doing some experiments about anger. Yes, anger is such an interesting phenomenon. Well, don't you think? I'd rather not think about anger at all. How interesting. Uh, tell me more. That's why we're here to see you, Professor Malcolm. Yeah, Jake is not comfortable with anger, so we were hoping there was some way that you could help us show him that anger can be a good thing. A fascinating proposition. It would require some preparation, but yes, I think I can help. What do you think, Jake? Are you interested? I guess it couldn't hurt. Oh, splendid! I'll start immediately. Uh, well, uh, as soon as I finish this very delicious waffle. <laughs> I can see the three of you. 
Can you see me? You're coming through loud and clear. Splendid. Jake, it is my theory that you're so uncomfortable with anger that you've convinced yourself that you're never angry. But your smartwatch can tell us the truth of the matter. My watch? Exactly. I will use it to measure your vitals, like your heart rate and blood pressure, as Tony and Dot describe some situations which commonly make people angry. This gauge would tell us how angry you really are. Are we sure that this is safe? I mean, I still get a little bit jumpy when there's a wallet lying around. Yes, 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 of course. I am 94.7% sure everything will be fine. Now, Jake, are you ready? <sighs> okay, let's do it. Very good. Let the experiment begin. Okay, Jake, imagine this. You're in the express checkout line at the supermarket, and you notice the person in front of you has 12 items. How about this? You pick up a chocolate chip cookie, only to realize that it's an oatmeal raisin cookie. I love oatmeal raisin cookies. Of course you do. Okay, you're looking for a space in a crowded parking lot, and you notice a car is taking up two spaces. Two. Tony, we're kids. Oh yeah, sorry. How about this? You nearly finish a puzzle, only to realize that the last piece is missing. <laughs> Did you see that? The gate moved. No, no it didn't. Okay, you've been waiting to watch your favorite TV show all week, but a friend spoils what happens in it before you can watch it. That, that doesn't bother me. Well, listen to this. You're at the premiere of the biggest superhero movie of the year, and the two people in front of you talk the entire time. Don't hold it in, Jake. Tell us how you feel. Why would they do that? If they wanted to talk, they could go outside. Everyone else in the theater is there to watch the movie, not listen to them talk. Okay, but how do you feel, Jake? I feel... Angry! Victory! Okay, but how can you use that anger for good? I could... ask the people in front of me to please stop talking. That's right. Great job, Jake. So, Jake, how are you feeling? I feel great. I hadn't realized how often I hold in my feelings. I think I'm gonna like being more honest. Oh, perfect. I think we can call this experiment a success. Do you want to help me track down a Bible link for Finn? Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for everything, Professor Malcolm. Of course, Tony. I, I, I just have one suggestion. Yeah. Keep an eye out on Jake for a while, just to make sure this transition goes smoothly for him. But I thought you were 94.7% sure that everything would be fine. Just think of it as keeping an eye out for that other 5.3%. Sure thing. Hey, nice chocolate chip cookies. Tony, I think we made a mistake. How so? It's Jake. He's getting angrier. I think we need to help him deal with what he's feeling before the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. Well, first he got a little snippy with Mike when Mike was goofing off earlier. Well, Mike probably shouldn't have been goofing off. Sure, but then he wasn't very nice to Maurice when Maurice nearly fell on top of him. Well, I can see how that would scare Jake. Well, and he's just getting used to expressing his anger, you know? Oatmeal raisin, my favorite. Oh. Chocolate chip? What sort of monster leaves chocolate chip cookies just laying around? Ew. Yeah, we should probably talk to yeah, him. Yeah, definitely. No! That video won't work as the Bible link. Come on, Archives. You should be better than this. Okay. Uh, hey, Jake. Tony, Dot, hey. How are you doing, buddy? Still loving my newfound freedom. It's so nice to actually say and do something about the anger I'm feeling. It's great. You know, I think I found a good Bible link for Finn. Do you want me to pull it up? Definitely. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive.
In the Bible, there was a rich man named Nabal who was known for being rude. Nabal had a large flock of sheep and goats and a wife named Abigail. Unlike Nabal, Abigail was known for being sweet. Hi! Not far from where Nabal and Abigail lived, King David and his men were camping. David needed some supplies, so he gathered some of his men to send to Nabal's house. He told them to greet Nabal with kind words, and Nabal should return their kindness. So the men went to Nabal, greeted him with nice words, and asked him for some supplies. But Nabal was nasty. Urgh, go away! He shouted insults at them and told them to leave. The men returned to David and told him the things that Nabal had said. David was furious. He told his men to grab their swords so they could get even with Nabal. Meanwhile, back at Nabal's farm, Abigail heard how poorly Nabal treated David's men. Oh no! She knew her husband's bad attitude could mean trouble for them. So she gathered food and supplies and loaded them up on donkeys. David and his men stormed through the desert, ready to get revenge on Nabal. Suddenly, they saw someone approaching. It was Abigail. Abigail bowed down to King David and begged him not to hurt Nabal. She asked David to stop and think before he acted out of his anger. David took a deep breath and thanked God for sending Abigail to calm him down. David accepted Abigail's gift of supplies and went home instead of doing something he might regret later on. Hooray! Because Abigail asked him to think about forgiveness, David chose peace instead of anger. David was so mad at Nabal that he wanted to kill him. But Abigail talked to him nicely and helped him deal with his anger so he wouldn't sin. It's important for all of us to learn how to control our anger and to talk to God about how we're feeling and give ourselves a moment to cool down before we make any decisions. Jake? I think I've been letting my anger get the better of me. It's the first time you've tried to deal with your anger. It makes sense it wouldn't be easy. What do I do if I sin when I'm angry? God loves you no matter what. So just ask for forgiveness from him and then apologize to people that you may have hurt. I'm pretty sure I need to apologize to Mike and Maurice and to whoever made those chocolate chip cookies. And don't forget to forgive yourself. Right. Thanks for helping me figure all this out. This anger stuff is tough. Well, that's why God gave us leaders and friends to help us learn. And I think you could help Finn by telling him what you've learned, Jake. Do you want to help me make his transmission? Let's do it. Hi Finn, my name is Dot and this is Jake. We have a great verse we would like to share with you. Say it with us like this. Ephesians 4.26 When you are angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Anger is not a sin. But it's important to deal with your anger quickly so you can take care of it before you start to hate someone, get revenge, or try to start a fight. When Nabal treated David badly, David was so mad he wanted to kill Nabal. But Abigail used kind words to help David to deal with his anger. Because of her, David calmed down and made a good choice instead of sinning. Everyone gets mad sometimes. Sometimes we ignore our anger and sometimes we let it blow up but we all need to learn to deal with it. A few of the best ways to control anger are giving yourself time to cool down and talking about what you're feeling to God and trusted friends or adults. And if you do sin when you're angry, don't worry. God still loves you. Apologize to God and to the person you hurt and forgive yourself too. Don't forget, if I'm angry and I want to fight, God can help me do what's right. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you.
Hmm, I think this banana might be a little too ripe. Do you have any others? I can check. Is this another experiment? I have no idea. Well, I guess this gives me a chance to practice doing what's right, even when I feel angry. Deep breath. <sighs> That's better. Yep, this is the perfect waffle. Although, now that I think about it, I could use some raisins and oatmeal. You know, maybe I just want a cookie. Emotions like anger aren't always easy to deal with, but God can help us do what's right no matter what we're feeling. And you can have that help every day if you choose to make Jesus your leader and number one friend. Do you want to make that choice? If you do, all you have to remember are the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that decision today? If so, be sure to talk about it with the parent or a leader you trust.